Jesus. Jesus. Oh man. Jesus. Jesus. There's nothing better than saying the name of Jesus in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> man. I just love Jesus. I love saying his name. And you never say it in vain because every his name is life. You know, whoever calls upon the name of Jesus is going to be saved. Not just calling upon him with your mouth. I mean, with all your sincerity, all your soul, all, every part of your being just calls upon the name of Jesus. Just to take over your life. Oh, he is our salvation. He is our eternal life. <laughs> Eternal life is not existing forever. It is Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. During worship, I saw that to put on the farmer of God is to walk in the holiness of God. You're not walking in holiness, you don't have the armor of God. You're an open target to get destroyed by the demon. What is holiness? Holiness is being separated, set apart for the master's use. Holiness is walking in his purity where it's tangible. You've completely surrendered your heart. You've completely surrendered your mind and you've completely surrendered your body. You're not using your body for fornication, getting drunk on alcohol or getting stoned on anything else except for the cornerstone, you know? <laughs> you want to be stoned by the cornerstone. <laughs> He'll take out every giant problem in your mind. <laughs> Guaranteed, man. But you gotta let that cornerstone just go sink right in there, just get right into the thought center, and just take over. <laughs> you might need a David in your life to whip some revelation and crack your forehead open so all the serpents can crawl out, you know? <laughs> you need the rock of Christ in your life, man. Hallelujah. And the true symbolic life of David is he was a worshiper after God's own heart. So you don't need, even really need a David to come and whip stones at you. You could, just, you could just live the lifestyle that David lived. He was just pursuing God. He wanted God more than anything. He wanted God more than his own kingdom. <laughs> Oh, he wouldn't try to take his kingdom by force from Saul. He's like, man, <laughs> this is in the Lord's hands, you know. I'm just giving, he surrendered everything to God. He screwed up a couple times. Who has it? There's only one who hasn't screwed up. He was perfect all the days of his life. So that we can walk in his perfection when we're crucified with him. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, you know, he fulfilled the law. So if you want to be fulfilled, you can't fulfill the law. <laughs> you got to be fulfilled on him. Because <laughs> uh, he's the only one who fulfilled the whole entire law blamelessly. He was the blameless lamb so that we can come into him and surrender our lives, our, our works, our ambitions, our failures, our, even our accomplishments to receive his accomplishments. Hallelujah. And it's a trade-off of faith. By faith, you must come to him. You know, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, right? And we must believe first that he is, you know. <laughs> he is that I am. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. Holy shaka. <laughs> so during worship, I was like, man, the holiness of God. You know, that realm of glory, that realm of peace, the realm of Shaka is your armor. God is your armor. Remember when Adam and Eve, they walked, they were naked but not ashamed because they weren't ashamed because they were wrapped in the glory. And there's no shame in the glory. But when they sinned, they found shame <laughs> because the glory had departed from their lives because of the sin in their life. Sin will always make you an open target for the enemy to come and feast on your flesh. That's why God said, the dust of the earth shall be your food, Mr. Serpent. You know, <laughs> Genesis chapter 3. That's that fallen nature of man, the fallen flesh. Every time we give in to sin and its lustful desires, 
I mean, you can see a temptation flying through the air. You don't have to like, hey, come and land here, you know, come and build a nest on my head, you know. No, you don't want to do that. You take up the sword of the spirit and <laughs> cut it off. <laughs> oh, just thrust it through with that flaming sword that, that's thrust you through so that you're crucified with Christ. So that you can go through the gate and enter into the Garden of Eden, which is paradise in your spirit, in your heart, to feast on the fruit of the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of God is, right? It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, but the kingdom of God's within you. Ah, you got a, you're a walking mobile throne with the throne of thrones within you. <laughs> Remember you said, if whoever overcomes will sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. <laughs> I like how it said, in the throne. It's like a dome of glory. <laughs> oh. So you want the full armor of God, do you? You can, you can just take it by faith, but that's only one piece, remember? <laughs> Sword of the Spirit. Oh, maybe we'll look at some Bible today, so it satisfies somebody's soul and they don't get all freaked out. <sighs> you didn't read the Bible. This can't be God. Or he read the wrong translation. He read the NIV. I'm a little, I'll even read the King James. I just. I grabbed the closest Bible. I bought this from my mama just before she flew to Jesus, the Word of God Himself. You know, <laughs> she left me with the with the paper, the logos. Oh. oh, look at this! Children, obey your parents in the Lord, <laughs> for this is right. <laughs> Don't believe the demon when your parents lie to you. You need to believe everything that your parents say in the Lord. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Obviously, you got to submit to your parents, your earthly parents, but not submit to anything wickedness. Hallelujah. Honor your father and mother. There you go. Honor them. Your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Or if you want me to read it so that you people can uh, understand it with the religious spirits. That you may dwell... That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Mayest, you know. <laughs> you gotta hear that old King James dialect, or it's not even God. <laughs> you know, when we listen to her prophecy, if they don't say thus to hit the Lord, it's not the Lord, you know, because we're listening in the flesh. <laughs> we're not even, we don't, we're so clueless to what actually the Spirit of God is. It's actually peace, righteousness, and joy. <laughs> But once you, once you encounter God, man, that is the entry point. That is like the sermon for everything else on the earth. You measure everything according to his spirit. So you can measure prophetic words. How much of the Holy Spirit is in that word? You know, how much of the anointing is on it? How much peace is on it? How much joy is on it? How much life? Because Jesus is a life-giving spirit. So if he's speaking, he's going to give some life in his spirit to you. Anyways, <laughs> now that most of the people have press stopped on the video, we can continue and go deeper in the glory here. Servants, I like how he's just hitting hard. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Wow, that's pretty intense. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ. Wow, that's a whole new perspective, Holy Ghost. Ah, oh, just doing everything is unto you. Having one mind, that above mind in the heavenly places, not the low mind of the dust realm. Thank you, Father, for the mind of Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for taking a crown of thorns, our cursed mindset, to give us the crown of life that we can have the mind and the thoughts of God, the mind of Christ, you know. We know your ways and we know your thoughts, those high thoughts, those high ways in your holiness. <laughs> Doing the will of God from the heart, not from the mind, from the heart. People get mad about that because they do everything with their mind and it's not from the heart. And then they manifest the demon that's trying to pretend that everything is okay because it's all in their mind, but it's not in their heart. They haven't given their hearts to God. Maybe they give them lip service. Remember, Isaiah was 
furious with these people. They 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 praise him with their lips, but their hearts are far away from him. Or was that at Jeremiah? You know, giving lip service like Judas who betrayed him and went to hell. <laughs> oh, did I just did I just interrupt your little doctrine of demons that there is no hell? <laughs> Jesus seems to think there was. He talked about it. Hallelujah. I believe him more than any any lying preacher that just wants your tithes and offerings. <laughs> Who cares about money when you got the glory? You know, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these earthly things will be added to you. Hallelujah. I'd rather have the earth, heavenly things anyways and then he'll provide all the earthly things we need. Amen, Chris. That's good. That'll preach. Just not in the mega churches. <laughs> no, yeah, whatsoever. Good thing. Any man doeth the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respective persons with him. The respective persons thing is huge, man. I used to say to God, like, God, man, look, you took all these people to heaven in the Bible. And I would sit there and I'd bawl my eyes out. And I would show Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, look at this scripture. You caught up by the locks of his hair between heaven and earth in an older, lesser covenant. Hey, I'm available. <laughs> you know, Enoch walked with God and he disappeared and you just sucked him into yourself. Hello, <laughs> I'm available. <laughs> and then you make yourself available and you start having heavenly encounters too. If you can see it in the scriptures, by revelation, you can manifest it. Hallelujah, because that's a living word for you. That's the seed of the kingdom. But you got to water those seeds in your heart. <clears throat> Anyways, this, this is where it gets to the good stuff. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Not in the brain, not in the flesh. Be strong in the Lord. That's the foundation of this armor thing. You want to be strong? You got to be in the Lord. <laughs> And in the power of His might. That's one of the seven spirits of God in Isaiah chapter 11. The spirit of might. In the power of His might. Not your might, but His might. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what the wiles of the devil are? False mindsets. Doctrines of demons, doctrines of men without glory, the knowledge of good and evil that doesn't bring you into experience, but it's just information in the brain, but not revelation given by the Father in the heart. It's like a parrot, like an animal repeating phrases, but there's no spirit in those words because it's just an animal. It wasn't coming out of your heart, out of your innermost being. It wasn't Christ speaking. It was just a, like, that's why someone can say something, like Jesus can say something and it's so powerful, it's realms coming out of him. And someone repeats the exact same things that Jesus said, but there's no power. <laughs> it wasn't coming from the innermost being. It wasn't coming from the heart. It wasn't coming from the spirit man. You know, the word of God divides soul and spirit. The spirit part of you is what got born again. That's the part that's born from above. So you speak from above when you speak out of your spirit. That's one spirit with the Lord that has been born again. You've been baptized into the Lord. So you're one spirit with the Lord so that when you speak out of your spirit and the Lord's anointings on it, you're releasing revelation that will crack foreheads open. Usually those come through dreams, through visions, anything with the presence of God on it where God reveals something to you. Just a simple little nugget. Or it could be something I said, or it could be something uh, anybody else said on YouTube. It could be something, a phrase. Like you just heard in worship one time, and that's the Lord speaking to you. Because it has light, it just hits you. And it, you're like, tears, like the, oh, the life is on it. There's, there's peace on it. I remember one time, at the end, come back to verse 12. At the end of this CD, or at the end of this song, this guy was singing, did you hear the mountains tremble or something like that? Did you feel the oceans roar? I bet the words are wrong. Na, 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 na. I can't remember what it's called. I can sing her your love for her. No, I got it mixed up. But anyways, the band name is Delirious. And he said, 
and he starts screaming in the background where you can barely hear him. He's yelling in the background at the end of the song. He's like, God's gonna give you a new sound. God's gonna give you new songs to release the brokenhearted. And he's yelling, you can barely hear him yelling this because he's away from the microphone and it's a live CD. And the Holy Spirit slams me in my basement while I'm lifting weights. And I'm like, what did that guy just say? I had to rewind it because I didn't know what he, I couldn't hear what he was saying, but there was something on those words. I knew it was the word of the Lord. It was the word of the Lord coming. He wanted to speak through a CD, something that was already recorded long ago. And I took that, I rewound it, I heard it, and then the tears just started rolling down my cheeks. God's going to give me a new sound. He's going to give me new songs to release the brokenhearted. That's the purpose of it. It's not to make me have a ministry. It's not to make me an amazing or anything. Who cares about me? I'm crucified. It's to release the brokenhearted. Release them from that, that, that snare and the traps of the enemy. And equip them to walk in victory, which is the full armor of God, which is walking in His holiness and His purity and His freedom. That was the word of the Lord. And I, I caught it. So it's not someone who's saying, Thus saith the Lord unto thee. Satan can say, Thus saith the Lord. It's probably the small L, you know. <laughs> Most of the time it is. <laughs> you know. And who cares about the King James? Man, I love all the translations. Except for the, the some, of, some of them, because a lot of them are really, really, really dumb. Demon possessed. Demons jump on me when I read them. Watchtower one, for instance. I don't know what it's called, but man, that, that thing is demonic. <laughs> There's demons. You get God, Holy Spirit's not a person at all. He's just the active force. You know? <laughs> no personality. They strip the personality of Holy Spirit away. They strip the divinity of Jesus away. Jesus is in God. <laughs> you know, you can't pray to Him to be saved. <laughs> You're totally lost. You're saved by works. And that Bible is demonic, 100%. People interpreted it. They were didn't even know Greek. They just they had these books. On, they were learning it as they go. You know, <laughs> it's all, the whole thing's a joke created by Satan, because Satan is a religious spirit with his own doctrines and his own agenda. Keep everyone in bondage and lost. Freedom. There's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. And that name, it's only one name, and it's not Jehovah. But it, although it is Jehovah. <laughs> Y-H-W-H, his name is Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved. You gotta call upon the name of Y-H-W-H, the name of Jesus Christ to be saved. Go, read, go look at it in your little Jehovah's Witness Bible. <laughs> it's there. No other name given under heaven but the Y-H-W-H, but his name is Jesus Christ. There's no other name. Ah. Oh. And it's pff, whatever. I don't even want to go down that road. It's like they'll try to talk about something else, and they go in circles. And they're like, "Well, what about the last point? Does that not mean anything to you, or is it just like you just want to run away from it?" You shall know the truth. Jesus Christ Himself said, "You search the Scriptures, and you think that in them you have eternal life. But it's the very Scriptures that testify about Me. Yet you will not come to Me and have eternal life, because He is our eternal life, not the Scriptures." The scriptures is just an outpouring of what the Holy Spirit spoke to men in their relationship with God. It's inspired. It is the Word of God. But Jesus Christ is the Logos made flesh. He's the Rhema made flesh. He's the Word of God made flesh so that we can see the Word of God. You can't separate me from my words. You can't separate the Father from the Word of God either. He is his he is his word. And you're going to take his spirit away? <laughs> Holy Spirit's God. Acts chapter 5. You've not lied to men, but you've lied to the Holy Spirit. You've lied to God. And in a, little, a couple chapters further on, Stephen calls upon Jesus Christ. He prays to Jesus saying, Lord Jesus, you know, receive my spirit or something like that. Stephen, go look it up. He said, you can't pray to Jesus. He prayed to Jesus. Saw Jesus right there, right then and there. Anyways, let's get back into the full armor of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Oh, so it's... 
We just wrestle against carnal minds who are full of demons. <laughs> we wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against prince, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I was talking about the spirit, which is the born again part of you that gets born again. You sit in heavenly places in Christ. That's the part of you that sits in heavenly places in Christ. And the soul, you need to get renewed in the, in the spirit of your mind, in the spirit of your soul, in your mind. That's your thought, your, your will, your intentions. I mean, you can get hurt in the flesh. Someone, someone takes an ax and chops off your arm. That is going to hurt. You can, get, you can get hurt in your soul. Someone can uh, say evil words to you and just criticize you and, and condemn you and your family members and that will hurt. But your spirit, you sit with, with Christ in heavenly places. You can get grieved in your spirit. But uh, anyways, <clears throat> spiritual, spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, wherefore, okay, here. Let's just get to, the, let's keep the main thing, the main thing. This is the full armor of God. You want to walk in victory, walk in this. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. He said that the second time. That ye may able, be able to withstand in the evil day. Some people don't even believe demons exist. Man, I cast them out like nearly every single day. Of my atmosphere, out of people. <laughs> Mostly out of Christians. I've cast more devils out of Christians than unbelievers. Actually, to tell you the truth, I've, I don't think I've ever cast a devil out of an unbeliever. I've kicked it out of my atmosphere. But with full manifestation where they're ripping your Bible up and they're blah, and they're just possessed by demons of, of rage and lust and all these other wicked things that come out of Christians. Say, Christian can't have a demon. Well, how come I only cast them out of Christians then? If a Christian... Starts, you get born again, they're truly born again. I've had demons cast out of me for drinking alcohol. That temptation, uh, you know, well, you're oppressed. Yeah, I'm oppressed by a devil that's entered my soul through giving it place to come in and just devastate me. You know, anyways, Holy Ghost. Hey, okay. I'm just gonna be at peace here, a little calm down a little bit so we can hear the message. I don't need to be very extreme or anything, it's just calm down and place on the full armor of God. <laughs> Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. All right, having done all to stand, done all to stand. You mean we gotta do something? Having done all to stand? Okay, let's find out what we gotta do. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. His righteousness, Jesus Christ, is our righteousness. It's written in uh, Jeremiah or Isaiah, somewhere, I can't remember. The branch, our righteousness. The branch, you know, our righteousness. <clears throat> He's this, the offshoot of Jesse or whatever. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. We give him our filthy rags, we receive his righteousness, and we wear it as a breastplate over our heart. <clears throat> and our loins guard about with truth, not giving heed to seducing spirits, lying spirits, doctrines of men, and doctrines of devils. Everything that Jesus said, he said, and he meant it. Don't try to twist it into something he didn't say. Because some pastor said this or some pastor said that. I've been through the Bible over a hundred times, cover to cover. Probably more than that because I listen to the audio Bibles non-stop and I'm learning languages with them. And I never once did I, I when I hear someone say these, these doctrines, it just like, I can feel the demon on it. And I can see the pride and the arrogance and the, how they just like, well, you're deceived and they, you know, they lash out at you. And all your, your only motive for telling the truth is for people to be free and to walk in the freedom of Christ. But not everybody wants the truth. Most people, uh, I don't know most, that's, forgive me God. A lot of people read the Bible to fit what they already believe. 
instead of just reading through the Bible and believing what it actually says. Go through every single translation, just listen to it from cover to cover, any topic, study it in depth, and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you, not flesh. He will teach you through man, but he is the best teacher in the world. Because we've been, like even people who are, like they're drunk, but they have such false, wrong doctrine. It's actually very demonic and it hurts you because it leads to rebellion. There's no help. It doesn't matter. Everybody's saved. Even even Satan's going to be saved, you know. <laughs> He's, you know, the, the lake of fire is not... It's not torment, like the Bible says. The lake of fire is God's love. Our God's a consuming fire. Then if the lake of fire is God's love, why does Jesus say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you, and to the devil, and be with the devil and his angels. They're not in the love of God. Depart from me? If it was the love of God, he would say, come into my love. Only those who are righteous enter into him. Outside, it's written that there's the liars and their doctrines. <laughs> the liars, the cowardly. You know, you people don't preach this anymore because they're scared to lose followers. I don't have any followers. <laughs> I follow Jesus. And if, if there's anyone following me, don't follow me. Follow Jesus. Any true teacher, evangelist, pastor, apostle, whatever, son of God, <laughs> Uh, a child of God will tell you, don't follow me, follow Jesus. I can't save you. If you see anything of Christ in me, give him the glory. Because I know by myself, I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute failure. He's the one who yanked me out of that fire and just pulled me into himself. All I, He's my only lifeline. <laughs> Why would someone want to follow flesh? But Holy Spirit is the one who will lead you into all truth flesh will lead you into their doctrines you need to follow Holy Ghost you need to follow Jesus the Christ Christ is spirit and peace and uh, and sometimes Holy Spirit will lead you in a wilderness where you be tempted by the devil <laughs> he led Jesus but he came out of that wilderness full of the Holy Spirit and started breaking chains didn't he we need to go through trials and testing Hallelujah. Wow, it feels really peaceful right now. I want to take all the sacred cows you got, and just the, take the sword of the Spirit and make some lamb chops and throw them on the barbecue of God's consuming fire. <laughs> Have some meat protein. <laughs> you know, or no, just throw them back into hell. You know, <laughs> we'll have some lamb. <laughs> I like my lamb in, nice and tender, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I have a little bit of milk and honey too. You know that honey? This is, man, this is such a revelation. My friend made me this butter and, and bread and honey sandwich. I'm like, oh, gross, man. Like, I thought it would be like yucky. It was so good. Oh my gosh, it was like the best thing that I could have ate that day. I wasn't even really that hungry, but it tasted like the best thing I could have. It was, it was like cake. It was like a treat. It was like manna. <laughs> what is it? It tastes sweet. <laughs> I wonder if that's what it was. You know what the manna was? Because <laughs> it, it was like it was bread, the bread of his presence, honey from the rock that enlightens the eyes to see Jesus in revelatory realm. You know, <laughs> bread, honey, oh, and butter. It, that's Job twenty nine. Oh, that I was in the days when the when I, when the Lord's favor was with me, and I was walking in my I was walking with God, and my steps were bathed in butter. He was walking in the butter, walking in the anointing, anointed, eye opening, fresh bread of His presence, man. Oh man, it had manifested in the natural. <laughs> he made me this butter. You can try it. It's so good. It's worth it. Just go to the store, buy some honey, some real butter, not this margarine and fake stuff. Margarine, man, ants won't even touch that stuff, but they'll they'll touch butter. <laughs> they know better. We don't know what nothing fake, man. We want the real deal. You want butter, honey, and a fresh loaf of bread. And you toast that up and just oh and you need to thank Jesus before you consume it. 
and you thank Jesus as you consume it, and you thank Jesus after you consume it. Oh, that is a really, that's a, that, it's a treat, man. I can't believe it's legal, and it actually is good for you. Hallelujah. Anyways, let's get back into some armor here. All these little side things. Wherefore, take under the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. So you got to do something, don't you? Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with the truth and having the breastplate on the breastplate of righteousness. Not your righteousness, his righteousness. Not your idea of truth, Jesus' idea of truth. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're walking in peace. You're walking the narrow road because you've surrendered the wide road that leads to destruction to him so that you can walk in the narrow road. The narrow road is as narrow as one person. You walk straight through him into the Father into an open Eden paradise. Ha <laughs> ha. Jesus. Glory. Glory. Shaka. Mm. So how do you get your feet prepared? <clears throat> with the preparation of the gospel of peace, you spend time with the Prince of Peace. And you begin to walk in His ways. You begin to walk. Even through the, even through the fire, He's walking with you. In, in you and around you. He's a shield around you. I like the Passion Translation. He's the Father's wraparound presence. Wraps around from the inside of your heart, all around your body and soul and spirit. Your entire being. It's like you're walking in an open heaven from the kingdom of God within you, pouring out through you. Oh, shaka. Above all, oh, there's something even more important than all these. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Faith, in, is written in Hebrews, is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. If there's no substance and evidence, your faith I learned that the hard way. But I'll tell you the truth. I dragged people out of wheelchairs that did not get healed. I didn't have faith. I had hope. But faith is the substance of those things hoped for. It's the evidence of things unseen. <clears throat> faith is like a heart faith, which is different from brain faith. Brain faith won't get you anything. Heart faith is a know that you know. Heart faith, you can curse the fig tree because it's more than just cursing a fig tree. It goes all the way back to Adam who tried to cover himself in fig leaves. He's like, that covering is cursed. The glory was to be the covering of man, not these man-made fig leaves. Jesus cursed that. So you can take off your fig leaves. <laughs> be clothed in him. Because he said to Nathaniel, from this day forward, you shall see the angels. The heavens opened. You can't see the heavens open with fig leaves on. All you'll see is a fig tree of the earth, you know. <laughs> you look up and you, the heavens are, are blocked by these fig leaves. Nathaniel, he was looking up. You know, the heavens weren't open. There was leaves in the way, wasn't there? He had to take off his fig leaves and wear the glory. Only the glories are covering, no man coverings. You're going to cover yourself in flesh or spirit. <laughs> the real you is your spirit you in Christ. So you need to walk in your the true reality of who you are in Christ. And when he appears, then you'll also appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. There'll be a lot of glory per pouring through your heart and mind. So, Jesus cursed that thing. And then later on he says to Nathaniel, or before he said that to Nathaniel, whatever, I can't remember what came first, but from this day forward, you shall see the heavens open and the angels. You're going to see angels in the open heavens? Yeah. We're, but what's the focus? They'll be ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus Christ is the focus. It's, it's that rock where Jacob laid his head. He anointed it with oil. It's the anointed rock of Jesus Christ that kills giants in the forehead. My thoughts just destroys your brain faith so that you can have heart faith, which is true faith, because brain faith will never bring forth what it's, it's, it's only hope. I've walked through this, this hoop hundreds of times. 
until I be, it, Revelation started, I started reading the word like just like crazy, nonstop. And it started exploding and words would come through like small things like this, like, like, uh, I was like, I'd be rebuking colds, nothing happened. God, how come I'm still sick? And your word says that by his stripes we are healed. I believe the word, I have hope. I didn't quite have faith until he explained it to me. It was one day I was reading and he came to, I think it's Galatians. You feel the Holy Ghost? Man, this feels good. This is the truth. I was reading one day, I think it was Galatians, somewhere around there, like three or two or three, around there somewhere. It's like, cursed is every man who is hung out a tree. And Jesus Christ became a curse for us. Something like that. I can't remember, but it was like, well, what is the, what was the curse that he has redeemed us from? And it goes back to Deuteronomy, I think 28 or 29. It's a bit fuzzy because this was like a decade ago. And like some of the curses in there, like if you don't do these things, you know, you know, if you do the things like the words in the covenant, blessed are your, you'll be your field, blessed you'll be going in, blessed you'll be going out, you know, but the curses were, part of the curses were like sickness. And I, like he redeemed us from the curse of the law, the curse that was in the law. One of them was sickness. And I saw it and it clicked. I, I'm not explaining it very well because, but, so I was like, I would get a flu. And I was like, whoa, hold on a second. I didn't really quote the scripture that I had hope for. Like, you know, I've been spice stripes, I've been healed. Like, although that's the truth, speak it out loud. It'll become rhema eventually. But I spoke the, the scripture that he revealed to me in the scriptures. <laughs> How did Jesus fight the devil in the wilderness? With the word of God, the scriptures. It was by revelation though. And when this exploded to me, I, I had the flu, I was sick. All of our friends, we all went out and we went to this noodle place and they're cooking the noodles right in front of us. I just like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? I feel so sick. My voice is like this. Uh, I'm all dizzy and just, oh. I was like, what have I done? I should be at home and bad. You know, you know that real, just full manifestation of sickness. And then I, like, I said to God, I said, you know what, God? You have redeemed me from the curse of the law. And part of the curse that was in the law is sickness. You have redeemed me, Chris, from the curse of the law. It was personal. And I receive that word right now. So sickness, get out of here. I've been redeemed by the curse of the law in the name of Jesus Christ. You are trespassing. Get out! I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel courage. I didn't feel anything. I just spoke what I knew was revelation and rhema in my heart. And then I left it at that. They were eating the noodles and we went to the beach. And then all of a sudden, four hours later, four hours, this is how long it took for me? Four hours. Some people it's instant. For me, it took four hours. One minute, I'm just like, oh, dizzy. Poof. Clarity. All my friends, like their voices come back and I'm, I'm not in this, this haze. It's, it's gone. It was like, boom, instant. The flu flew away. <laughs> where did it go? <laughs> Probably went back where it came from. The devil got the flu that day. <laughs> and I was truly redeemed from the curse of the law. Because Jesus took all the law into himself, all the curses of the law into himself and redeemed us and sucked us through himself and sucked us into the heavenly places in him. So where we can walk in perfect freedom and liberty. Yeah, by his stripes we are healed, that's true. But it wasn't true revelation until that other scripture that was revelation to my heart, revealed by the spirit in the scripture, explored off the page, like wow, this is alive. That Jesus Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us. I gotta read it now because I can barely remember how it goes. Uh, uh, I can't remember whereabouts. Faith came, or for the law, schoolmaster. 
Here we go. Let's just read. Well, let's go. I'll finish the armor of God first because I only got like seven more minutes. But stand. Uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Above all, taking the shield of faith, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Boom, that's what I was trying to get, okay? <clears throat> In his voice, spirit. That's where faith comes from. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That means every single attack of the enemy, boom, just comes again. That shield of faith, you just, <laughs> So you need to get built up in the logos and let it become rhema in your life. Take out all the fiery darts of the enemy. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Helmet of salvation, that means we have the mind of Christ and the sword of the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit speaking through you. He's the spirit. The sword is his words coming through you. And also speak the logos, uh, which is the word of God. It's actually Jesus Christ speaking through you. Or speak the logos. It's both. There's Logos and there's Rhema. They're both the Word of God. <laughs> okay. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Not just in the flesh. <laughs> Shaka. <laughs> and watching therein too with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. So you're not just looking out for yourself. You're looking out for all the saints. You're praying for everybody. Stay full of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus ever lives to make intercession for the saints. And he'll intercede through you. And it feels good. <laughs> you might even start crying, but it feels good. <laughs> it's like you feel his heart for them. Okay, now I want to go back to uh, Galatians chapter 4. Uh, I'm going to go to verse, actually, chapter 3, 29. If you be Christ, therefore, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the, an heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the appointed until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman under the, under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth His Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How be it then? That is not it. But that was good. I, I really liked the way that, that was truth. Man, I wish I knew where that was. I need one of those digital Bibles where I can just text it. about faith so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham as many as are the works are ha found it so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Right here, verse 13. 313. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And I was like, what is the curse of the law? Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. And if you want to know what the curse of the law, it's Deuteronomy chapter 29 or 28. I haven't looked back here in a long time. This is a long ago. But it so helped me fight every form of sickness, oppression. Uh, this is Deuteronomy 28, 15. These are the curses in the law. This is what Jesus Christ has redeemed us from. It is written. 
But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all these commandments, which his statutes, which I command you thee this day, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So these are the curses that are written in the law, the law of Moses. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store, so what you bring in, poverty. <laughs> Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, and the increase of thy, thy kind, and thy flocks, and thy sheep. So your prosperity will be cursed. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, cursed this shall be when thou goest out. And the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and on all that thou saidest thine had to do for to do until thou be destroyed, and thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, because of thy wickedness. You're reaping what you're sowing. We reap what Jesus said when we come into him by faith and give him everything of our dead works. Okay, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he consume thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess. The Lord shall smite thee with consumption, with a fever, with inflammation, and with extreme burning, with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and, and they shall pursue thee, and thou shalt perish, and thy leaven, and over thy bread, my head shall be thy brass. There's no open heavens. The earth shall, under thee shall be iron, no fruitful farming. You know? yeah. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust, dryness, weariness. You know, from heaven it shall come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Uh, well, and the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies, and thou shalt go out one way against them and flee uh, seven ways before them, and thou shalt be removed. I don't know, I'm trying to find where it says sickness. Oh, okay, the Lord will smite thee with botch of Egypt, with the emeralds, hemorrhoids, ugh. and with the scab, ooh, get scabby, with the itch, <laughs> where thou canst be healed. There's no healing. He's our healing. The Lord shall smite thee with the madness, mental illness, blindness, and astonishment of heart, heaviness of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday in blind. As the blind gropeth in darkness, thou shalt not prosper in their ways. Thou shalt only be oppressed, spoiled evermore. No man shall save thee. It means you're going to be cursed because you've given in your life over to the curse. Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall take her. Uh, then your grapes, ox slain, taken away. Sons and thy daughters, thine eyes shall look and fail for longing. The fruit of thy land, um, so that it shall be mad. Smite thee in thy knees and thy legs with sore bosh cannot be healed, that sore from thy foot. The Lord shall bring upon thee thou which shall sore above our nations. So bad things. <laughs> I ran out of time. I can't find the part where it says sickness, but it's it's in there. Go read it yourself. There's a lot of bad things in there. And if that if you have to get out of that dark cloud, just go back to uh, remember what it says in um, uh, Galatians that he's redeemed us from these things. <laughs> you know, the curse of the law. <laughs> And he took it all upon himself so he could bring us into liberty and freedom in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. <laughs>